got going here are my peppers. I'm going to grow a lot of my F2 sweet and spicy pepper because the second generation is what F2 stands for. Filial 2 or second generation. They have a, there's a lot of diversity in the second generation. So I'm going to grow a lot of them out. Now this is a 10 by 10 that I've got with some oasis cubes that I pre-wetted. And I put the seed in there. I think there's, I think I put in 80, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, yeah, 8 wide by 10. And there's 80 peppers in there. I'm going to try to grow them out the big no weed garden. I got four uh, spinach here to grow in the lettuce assembly that are also there. So, yep, um, I'm going to put these on. This paper towel is over the top just to keep everything moist until it germinates. And I'll bring you back as they grow. Here are those peppers today. Today is the 23rd of March, and it's 23 days after planting. And most of them germinate. So now I have to transfer them to a little bigger pot, and they're going to stay in that little bigger pot until I put them in the garden. Pot up the peppers. I need to create my soil container mix that I'm going to grow. Um, that I'm going to grow in this year. It's also going to be my seed starting mix in some cases and in this particular case it's a transition from for starts to go in the garden from the oasis cubes to the little pots I'm about to show you and then out to the garden. So I've got um, I'm going to have one part peat, sphagnum peat and the pile over there is aged rice holes been sitting there for about three years and I'm going to dig down a little bit I'm going to get another one part of that one part of peat mix it in this wheelbarrow and add a little um, lime to it to uh, take some of the peat moss acidity out of the picture and that should do quite well to grow these peppers set up here a couple of landscape not landscaping timbers but uh, deck boards to use as a bench of sorts while I put my little uh, pepper seedlings in those little uh, cups there of course I've got my mix I just mixed and I've got this little garden chair here that my wife bought me last year and the thing is awesome you can uh, sit on it just like that or you can kneel on it by turning it upside down. These will have to come off, but yeah, you can turn it upside down. It's got another pad on the other side. I just love this thing, and uh, it helps a lot. You can see here that I'm in the shade. I've got my neat little garden hat here that I wear when I'm outside because I spend a lot of time outside, and I want to protect myself some. Not in too not too embarrassed to wear it, and. Um, so I'm in the shade. I want to keep the uh, melanomas off as much as possible. And uh, since I spent so much time out here, and I'm getting ready to load these up. So let me go get the peppers. So why did I start my peppers in Oasis Cubes? Well, there's a couple reasons. The primary reason is because I can get 80 in a little 10 by 10. It's actually less than a 10 by 10. I can get 80 of them. And when you plant 80 of these, it takes up a lot of my shelf space in the in the grow room in there. These are going to be transferred in there and then go in the grow room, but not as long. And um, I was going to start tomatoes at the same time, but I'm going to start them a little bit later now. Um, so because I have some growing in the grow room. So I'm going to take these. The second, excuse me, the second main reason is because I learned from growing microgreens and lettuce and cabbage and everything else in the assembly that most vegetables will grow great hydroponically and they start 
excellent in Oasis cubes and you don't have to worry about any organic issues because once you go organic like any kind of mix or um, soil or you, you know even ca earthworm castings anything organic will have bacteria in it and you can't always make sure that that bacteria is absolutely um, will not harm your plants. There's going to be good bacteria and bad bacteria in there and that's why people have damping off. Um, it's, it's disease and so if you grow in you know completely inorganic materials like an oasis cube then the babies can get up to this size and they have uh, a lot better chance of making it against damping off. As a matter of fact I don't think I've seen plants at this size that have had damping off. So when I transfer it over into these, there should not be any of, any of those issues. So when I plant tomatoes, I'm going to have four or five times the amount of tomatoes. So I can put, um, I can use two 1020s with Oasis cubes and I can start them all until I get a real good height on them. And then in my particular case, I'm going to grow them in containers in an OE garden tomatoes this year I am. And so the peppers are going in the ground, but the tomatoes are going to go in containers so when they get this size, a little bigger maybe, I can just take them directly out of the oasis cubes and plant them in the containers. You may have watched from last year that I washed and sanitized all of these. Well, after I didn't need these anymore, I rinsed them well. But this year, I'm not sanitizing the mix and I'm not sanitizing the containers because I think the plants are past that stage now. So I'm going to take these one at a time, and just like that. You can see the amount of, hopefully, the amount of uh, roots that came with that Oasis cube. And I'm gonna put just a little bit in the bottom, just like that, and I'm gonna drop the whole Oasis cube in there. And then I'll just add some mix. Go to the other side. Add a little bit of mix. And then I'll tamp it down around. Just like that. It won't hurt anything. And I get a nice firm two inch container of my new pepper taken from the oasis cube so that's really easy I'll do one more for you and then I'll finish them up off camera just pull it right off just like that this one's got a little less on it a little bit in the bottom the oasis cube is in the middle as much as possible which puts the pe pepper in the middle as much as possible and then, whoop, well that just shows you that I am not perfect and that little pepper did not break. It could have, but it didn't. So we got lucky with that one. Hopefully I won't do that again, but I'm glad I did it because you're watching. All right, that's it. Got two of those. And now I'll finish these off. So I finished planting up 64 each one of these little tray inserts. This is an actually an insert that goes in the bottom of a 1020 or goes into a 1020 and it has 32 of these little two inch pots in it and I've got two of those so a total of 64 and I planted 80. Um, there was a few that didn't germinate and I did drop two of these uh, well actually the tray tipped over because of what I set it on I lost two of them because of that so anyway uh, I've got 64 of them here and uh, some of you may be wondering what these are these peppers are all my breeding this is called sweet and spicy pepper and it's a cross between my California Brian pepper which is um, a Santa Fe type pepper that's open pollinated I crossed it with lipstick I wanted to bring in some sweetness from the lipstick pepper and tone down the spiciness of my pepper, um, California Brian. 
and California brine is about, uh, I'd say about 600 Scoville. It's about uh, about a uh, quarter to half of a jalapeno, a good spicy jalapeno. Uh, but I want to tone it down even more so I can eat these things regularly and I want to bring in some sweetness too. So that's the purpose of this. Um, there are so many of these because this is the second generation and the second generation is the most diverse. When you cross two plants that are open pollinated, the genetics are solid and when you cross them, the first generation is very, very uh, consistent because you have a dominant and a recessive gene and the recessive always uh, does not display in the first generation, the dominant characteristic does. And so that's why hybrids are such a big deal uh, besides it with plant breeders and seed companies because they know that that's a great way to secure and keep you coming back for seeds is to make two open pollinated um, varieties, cross them together, make a hybrid, and you'll keep coming back for that hybrid. Uh, however, if it's an open pollinated, if they sold their two open pollinated, one or two or both of their open pollinated, they know that if you save the seed, you won't be going back to them. So that's why hybrids are very popular. The first generation is super, super consistent. It's as consistent as an, a fully open pollinated, true to seed uh, variety such as um, Brandywine or Cherokee Purple. Uh, Big Beef is a hybrid and that's a cross of two different open pollinated so every time they cross those two open pollinated you get Big Beef first generation. Now if you were to save seed from the Big Beef it's the same thing as what I've got going on here that would be the second generation or F2, Phalil 2 second generation. What happens in the second generation is all of those genetics from both parents are just all over the place and you get a lot of diversity. You can save seed from any hybrid plant and it will grow. That's a, that's a fallacy that it, that it will not grow, but the, the genetics are gonna be all over the place if the two parents are really different. If the two parents are very similar, it's going to be hard to see. It's going to be hard to see the subtleties of the difference of the two. These two plants, lipstick and California Brian, they were very similar in shape uh, and leaf structure. My California Hybrid was more productive, a lot spicier, and it wasn't as sweet as the lipstick, which was had a little bit fatter and shorter fruit on it than my California Brian. So I'm combining those two. Uh, like I said, to get the traits that I want. Now this is the, I'm growing out so many because like I said, the genetics are going to be all over the place. So the first generation cross, you got a, you got 50, 50, 50 percentage of each parent. The second generation, which is this one, you'll get about 75% of them that are going to be fairly similar and 25% because you're halving each generation you're halving the genetics and you're, you're working towards a stabilization. The next generation will be um, 86%. The third generation will. So out of these F2s, all of these growing here, I'm going to attempt to find, and I'm sure I will, a, a plant that has all the characteristics I like. The growth habit, the sweetness, the, some spiciness to it and, um, and just everything I want and then I'll save the seed only from that one plant and that'll be the F3 generation and when I grow out that plant seed then they're going to be 75% or wait a minute third, is second, third, third, it's going to be 86% um, similar to the one that I select from these. Anyway you carry it all the way up to eight generations and you're like 99.9 something percentage and that's why they call it growing true to seed or true to plant. And, uh, then you have an open pollinated variety and then from there you can name it. Some people name their varieties before they're open pollinated in an early generation but that's really not a good idea because if you start dispersing seed from a plant that's not stable then you have all these other variations for one name so it's not really cool to do that. They do it with hybrids because Big B for example will always be the same because they're only going to cross the two parents and you don't have the two parents so 
they know that so the beef, big beef hybrid is always going to be the same so that's it for this uh, they're a little droopy um, uh, they're gonna pop back I think tomorrow so what I'm going to do now is this is the towards the end of March I think today's the 24th of March and so I'm gonna put these back in the winter grow room on the shelf with a lot of lighting I'm gonna let these get about three to four times the size wait about four to five more weeks and then I'll go out in the garden out there directly from these little two inch pots so tomorrow I think they're gonna snap back just wonderfully and about a week before I put them out in the garden, I'll bring them out and I'll put them in shade like where I'm sitting now where the sun doesn't come in. And then every day I'll just uh, uh, long, I'll put them out in the sun uh, for a short period and then in the shade and then a little bit longer the next day for about a week. And after that they'll be ready to go out in the garden. They'll be what's called hardened off. Good to go. So this is Brent, you guys. This is what's going on with my breeding. Uh, of sweet and spicy pepper and how I grew them from oasis cubes directly in oasis cubes and then transplanted this eventually to going out there.